Well, here we go again, chaps. I don't know why we're buffering. I'm buffering. Uh, or anyone's buffering as such. The whole idea of these things when I started them, anyway, at least uh, what is now the isolation uh, vlog playlist, was that it gives you an idea of what can go through a person's head uh, at any given time, but also in lockdown. And again, as I seem to do now, living on the internet as I am, have been, uh, check the trending list on YouTube and wonder to myself why. <laughs> I know that if we all liked and did the same thing, it might be a dull world. But I just don't get why the whole internet needs to know that you're ha uh, having a baby, unless it's family. I don't know. Or um, how to put lipstick on, or something, but then, you know. It's not a good week, really, to have opinions, I don't think. It's, uh, it's all mountain as a pile of unending shit. Um, if you're someone who thinks certain things, believe things should be a certain way, it's a good and bad week for you. Um, they've boarded up, because I think there's protests apparently tomorrow in London, uh, they've boarded up the Churchill statue in Parliament Square and Sen the Cenotaph. Um, I don't know what depresses me more, really. Now, I can sort of understand the Churchill statue. That's always been a centre for protests. Some of them rather inane. I think the fox hunt, in, the fox hunt ban protest, what, almost 20 years ago now? Uh, we're doing stuff to it. Poll tax wires might have done something to it. Uh, the Extinction Rebellion certainly did, because some of them don't know how to read and write. Um, but the Cenotaph? The Cenotaph is meant to be honouring uh, the man, memory of men that have died for their country, whether for good or for ill, all the way from the First World War through to Iraq and Afghanistan, and anywhere else we've stuck our foot in. Have we been, have they been attacking it because the Cenotaph represents some of the soldiers who went off to fight for a country that was still in imperial power from uh, in the First World War? There was a young lady, I believe it was a young lady from the photos, who was trying to set fire to the Union flag and the police were remonstrating with her apparently and um, yeah. But Matt, you don't understand, the flag represents this, that and the other to people. Yes, I know, it's also still this country's flag, whether we like it or not. And though I flinched yesterday at some people wearing Union Jack race jackets and Union Jack this, that and the other next to the statue of Robert Baden-Powell in pool, I think to myself there's something rather inherent, be stupid about trying to set fire to a flag. And it's all round dandy. They're being informed people on either side, but I've yet to encounter more than five informed people that can't, uh, who have yet to express an opinion without resorting to personal insult or any kind of slur, slander, and otherwise. It works one way, of course, doesn't it? Your opinion is the right opinion. I'm not talking about race as such. I said in the video about two ago, the 40 minute one with dear Pete Jules from now, that I have never considered myself privileged. I don't believe in white supremacy. I don't believe in any of that nonsense. What I do believe in though, is that debate is a two-sided thing. Somebody was expressing an opinion on the Facebook group that um, something like, um, so there's somebody who went a stupid poem that basically was a bit racist and so and people were saying, why is this being allowed in that? And then this woman said, um, well, you know, why is it, why, why shouldn't it not be allowed? I think it should be allowed. And somebody goes, I think racists are cunts, do you like that? And all this stuff. No, 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 hang on a minute, please. 
wind your necks in. We must respect the person's opinion. Uh, we must respect the person's right to s express that opinion, even if the opinion expressed is unpalatable to us. If we remove everything that we do not find palatable, that we don't like, that has some kind of dark connotation to it, there'll be nothing left at the rate things could go. Oh, Matt, you're, you're overreacting. You're not understanding the issue. Fine, I understand. You know. My granddad surfed in Kenya during the Second World War. He didn't see any action. He was with the King's African Rifle Corps. And I was saying, you know, that granddad got on rather well with the tribesmen, you know, and uh, the local tribes that surfed in the King's African Rifle Corps. They saw the King's Royal African Rifle Corps. Many of them, by the way, died in Burma. The Forgotten War. And all we get is, well, he shouldn't have been there in the first place. Well, he was there, and he wasn't a racist. He's not a racist. Without asking, I don't think my granddad was lording it over the locals, you know. There were times, apparently, as a regimental sergeant major, he had to be sent at a weekend, uh, at the end of the weekend, to get some of them back because uh, they left to go home, and he had to explain rather politely to him because he spoke Swahili. Apparently, <laughs> that um, sorry, Sherps, I understand that you want to see your family, but you're in the British Army now, and we have a, you know, you have to request leave and all this stuff. I don't know how it worked. Probably something out of an Ealing comedy. All my life. Very nearly 35 years of it, I have never heard my granddad express a racist thought or ever say when talking about Africa, uh, about the blacks, as if he, he was better than them, as if he bossed them around an imperial rover, imperial swagger. And I'll defend my granddad until the day I die. I know he doesn't need defending. There are people with reprehensible views and opinions. I shan't defend them. Just fed up with the whole damn thing. Fucking being drawn into the internet and living my life through it at the moment. Trying to get away from it. I'm stuck in a flat where at least twice a day I have to have my flipping floor shaken by bloody music downstairs. And as I said before, I know it's their living, but bloody hell. Worse today, I had it in the middle of the day when I came back from town. So, you know, trying to watch uh, one of my favourite 1940s films, Berlin Express. It's not the best film ever made, but there's something about it I quite like. And boom, 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 you know. There they go again. And also they've got some, uh, some kind of system, it seems, so that they can interact with their clients. Because um, I think this instructors you haven't watched one of these before. And the air codes and stuff. And then I made a mistake bringing up Churchill. I think it was Churchill who actually said that uh, a lie gallops halfway around the world before the truth is able to get his trousers on. Apparently he did change his opinions over his lifetime. So he said, well, you think, uh, I, I, I wouldn't have changed my opinion after murdering millions of people. Mm. It's interesting, you know, I was reading a book at the start of lockdown that I had gone from the library and I've immediately <laughs> forgotten the cover, the title and the author. Oh shit. And it was hunting about uh, the British pursuit of Nazi war criminals um, in 1945 onwards, well, the immediate post-war period, uh, 
for those that have been responsible for the likes of Belsen and Buchenwald and camps near Hamburg and the like. And it was going on for a couple of years. And apparently this bloke had written a book about what the British did to prisoners in Iraq in 2003, four time. And, you know, it was full of... It, it, it read like self-righteous indignation rather than anything. And, I can, and then I was thinking to myself, well, you know, give the man a chance. I, you, don't, you haven't read his Iraq book. Um, and it wasn't good what those soldiers did, I'm not defending in the slightest. And then he said, well, you say to... They, they, one of the newspapers at the time, probably a bloody tabloid like the Mirror sign, spoke to people on the street and said, what do you think about it? And the, the general sort of consensus was, well, we're British, we don't do that sort of thing. That's something that the Nazis were doing. It's an interesting point of view, because even my mentality, without, uh, without me thinking on purpose, is that the British don't do that sort of thing. And yet we have, you know? I consider myself British, I consider myself proud to be British. Does that mean I'm proud of what this country has done? No. There, I, know, I knew somebody that was always, you know, not in my name kind of person, and I'm ashamed to be born in this country because of what we've done. Every country on the planet has more or less done something stupid, to put it mildly. You know, Germany is still apologising for trying to wipe a race and species off the face of the earth. The Americans have done enough in the 20th century to make up for anything we've done in America. Or whatever, I don't want to worry about. But we're, I'm British, so I suppose it's more acutely felt. Remember David Cameron, when he was Prime Minister, apologising for what the British had done to the Kenyans after my granddad had actually left, you know, during the fall of empire. Um, and somebody writing in the Times or something, probably, a serious newspaper anyway, that it's David Cameron seemed rather awkward about doing it and it lacked suffering because essentially David Cameron had not been born when this stuff was going on and had no, had no connection to it, unlike somebody like Churchill, perhaps. It'd be like me apologising for what we did during the Easter Uprising. I've read about it, it's not good what the British got up to in Ireland. But I wasn't alive when it happened. Doesn't mean I should not be sorry for it, that I should not apologise for it. There's a disconnect. We've apologised for what we did in the work. And it's not, it's still ongoing. But I'm not going to be turning around and saying I am ashamed to have been born in a, this country with its history. Somebody again on that useless Facebook page saying it's, um, you know, statues celebrating mur uh, murderers, paedophiles and um, slave owners uh, celebrate your history. Well, I'm sorry, whether you like it or not, it's your history as well. It... Because I'm right, is it solely my history? Perhaps it is. Tired and I'm fatigued. I haven't had a proper night's sleep since this whole stupid business died. I don't think I've actually had a decent night's sleep since I started the tour job over a year ago in March. Past couple of nights, days even, I have woken up feeling more tired. Then I went to bed. Night before I was in an hour sleep. Today I woke up at 10, which is the earliest I've woken up on a weekday now since three, four, five weeks ago. And you know, down, boom, 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 and whoop, 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 and all that. 
and I was drowsy as hell and initially I was going to lie there or, and go back to sleep maybe and then the door banged and the postman did what postmen seemed to like doing and just be an idiot I, I read that a postman will knock on the door and stand back when you open the door and say uh, here's your package and I've had it in the past you know bang the door look chap sort of lend like that and I go thank you or you know you could look, you know as long as you left on the door and stood there this boy I, I got to the door I opened it and straight away looked because I could see a blur of red and he's halfway out or uh, uh, slipping down the road and my parcel's down there well what if I wasn't in you know I, I've had trouble with kids in our alcove back in uh, in in December you know and I've got something else coming all the way from fucking China and that's something else. Where's there for, you know, I don't expect the whole nation to be up in arms, but no one's talking about Hong Kong. No, another thing we've done before, something you're going to point out. China are, getting away, are going to get away with murder, blue or otherwise, and go after Taiwan. What are people going to say then? You know, that will be a democracy going under. A legally, democratically elected democracy. It has been its own country since the 1940s. That has never uh, been part of the Republic of China, as far as I'm aware. Not in my not in my lifetime, anyway. The People's Republic of China, because Taiwan is the Republic of China, isn't it? Somebody said, why should we take millions of Hong Kongers? Well, they don't all want to come over. They want to see it out to the last bullet, from the sounds of it. But they were British, you know, until 1997. And they'd rather be British again, from the sounds of it. God, can you imagine? The only people who, only people overseas that willingly want to be, well, the only people on the planet, from the sounds of it, that were, some of them willingly want to be British, apart from the Falklands. And then you um, then you have a doctor who um, phones you. <laughs> you know, is that so? Is it? Yes. Um, how can I help you today? Well, you know, for my surgery, I might add. Uh, and I go, I, I go, I don't remember making an appointment. In fact, I've been looking this week to make an appointment because of my lack of sleep. And can't get one. The surgery said they aren't offering one. Oh, oh, okay. Well, you say you didn't want to, you didn't need, you hadn't found an appointment. No. And I thought, well, this is great. Now I shot myself in the foot, haven't I? And he's like, well, how can I help you about the sleep? Boom, 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 boom. What do you do? And then because of my mental health stuff, he asked me about that. And then I had suicidal thoughts and stuff. And all this stuff. So I had a really trying conversation because that kind of stuff is not easy. It's not something you can sit there with a uh, glass of whiskey in one hand while through soothingly going, yeah, yes, yes, I've tried to kill him myself. Yes, it was brilliant. Not to a complete stranger. So, I um, thought to myself, see if we can get ourselves off Facebook for a week. And uh, they say, well, they'll go, oh, you can just leave it. No, because your stupid website is bloody useless. There is, f seemingly, and I've had a good old look because I'm pissed, um, no legitimate way to directly go to Facebook and make a complaint about racism, hate speech, or anything really that you don't like, unless it's a technical fixture, like say, I don't know, a link keeps failing, or you're getting, you, you keep getting in, I, I don't know. Um, I've reported stuff, and it comes back and goes, we've refused your post or whatever, blah, 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 the thing you've reported, blah, 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 we can't see anything here, we understand it's unhappy, why don't you just block it, blah, 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 blah. and then occasionally you might get one that says, see if you want to challenge it, so you challenge it, and then it comes back 10 minutes later saying, blah, 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 blah. neither of them 
need for the responses from Facebook. Uh, sorry, need, the, the challenge does not allow you to elaborate on why you're challenging. You can't put a little sentence in going, it's flaming racist or something, or they're uh, discriminating against me based on my politics, whereas anyone else is getting a free reign to uh, do what they want. Um, there's no way for you to write to them and go, well, this, that, and the other. Like when they um, first pulled up a post I made eight years ago of that propaganda picture of Hitler that the Americans had saying if, uh, about Karsha, and it said, if you don't, if you ride alone, you ride with Hitler. And I, had, and I thought it was the funniest shit I've seen. So I put it online and said, look at it, you know, ha, ha, ha. I was not going whole Hitler and snapping my heels together, but apparently Facebook said it was dangerous individuals and stuff. Interesting, dangerous individuals. Facebook. And then um, about a couple of weeks later, they pulled up a post I had, well, I think one of my day-to-day -day Battle of France posts, which no one gives a shit about. <laughs> You know, and I was like, and both times I challenged, I, uh, uh, they said, if you don't, you're not happy with the decision, click here and stuff. And I clicked here. And I thought, well, it'll allow me to say why I'm challenging it. No. <laughs> and yet, as I've said before, I've um, reported somebody's profile pit once. I don't know how it was. It must have been on some public page. And he had a swastika flag on his wall. Behind him, I said, oh, this chap's a racist, look at that, that's a dangerous individual. Oh well, the flag represents. Nah, apparently it's not in breach of thing. Um, the poor the bloke there had nothing but stuff about, he was a Holocaust denier and they had stuff like saying that all Jews deserve to be wiped out or something like that. And that the Jews always have it, and all this stuff about Jews and that. I said, this bloke's anti Semitic. No, he's not breaching any guidelines, no, of course not. And the dancer says, why don't you, um, do you go out of the house much? And I said, not really. And he goes, because you don't want to. And I'm like, well, there's nothing to do. The things I do before lockdown, I can't. The bookshops are closed. The pub is closed. London I can't get to because I'm not allowed on a train, technically, because it's still for a central journey. And, and I have no essential journey. And, of course, that's something else today, you know, the company... Uh, message us all and go well this is your update blah 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 so we're now 80 days in you know we would have made 20 million dollars use the dollar sign by now from the start of easter we've made zero when we all when we return we're going to have to cut our cloth accordingly and i i know one else has said anything to me yeah but i take that to mean they're going to ditch the tour guides because you can run buses uh without commentary it does mean that unfortunately my mates the drivers i get on with anyway uh, will have to take what they do on the blue bus and and the orange bus but mostly the blue bus apparently <laughs> where uh, they'll be subjected to people coming up and downstairs constantly asking them questions the tour guide is there to do a guide but it's more there to be a human shield i mean i fought seven years at m s had given me everything about being spoken to like a piece of shit issued by cheapskates but no, the bus too. And you know, people at MS are going, oh, you always weird, you always look unhappy. Yeah. I wonder why I always looked unhappy in that job, the way I was spoken to day in, day out. You wouldn't treat your dog the way you treated people in the cafe. That stupid woman that always. It was always speaking about me over in the air shot. So yeah, that's the general state of play. And my hair seems to be thinning out already. Oh well. So... There's a chance we could be back as a job uh, by August, but I'm not holding my breath. 
So that's it, I suppose. Desperately wanted to go on and on and on, but as it is, this video will probably take me all night to upload. <laughs> so, uh, yeah.